That's all. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask you, um, you're a prescriber to Dumpster Fire now. You're, you watch the Dumpster yep. Fire, Bridget Fetacy. Yep, um, you need to be watching because her and Jordan are both going to be giving birth real close to the same time. Yeah. So your guys' this next child might coincide with Bridget Fetacy's child. There you go. So you got to watch out for that. Zeke, you ever watch yeah. Dumpster Fire on YouTube or know who Bridget Fetacy yeah. is? No. Oh, man, it is a great time. It's, it's such a good way to to just sit back and, like, laugh at the burning world and lets you just kind of like, you know, all this bad news, all the world-ending stuff, you know, you got to take time to laugh at it, man. You can't take it too seriously. Otherwise, we'll all go insane. Right. I mean, that's kind of what I use Rick and Morty for, but, you know, I'll, yeah. I'll use that. Has... Dude, that episode – I. Rick and Morty's fucking great. Let's yes. just put it that way. There's fucking great, dude. It's nobody fucking does it amazing. better. That is a wild ass beer, by the way. Isn't it? That is a full bodied Pilsner. I I went through twenty four German imported beers during uh, December, and it was one of those like Advent calendar deals. Um, yeah. Which, by the way, if uh, for all you viewers and listeners out there, if you didn't catch that, you catch that on our YouTube page. It's all on. Uh, I think there's a playlist for it and all that stuff. That's right. Instagram um, too. And oh yeah, on the on the Instagram. But uh, this is wild. I, there's actually I don't know if you could see it in there. There's like sediment. You got the yeast proteins and stuff floating around on here. Some you floaters. don't usually see that in a pilsner. This is really good. Yeah, it's like a little mm. bit fruity. You know, yeah, it's sour on the front and then the aftertaste. I I'm feel a like huge. Is a bit fruity. I could drink that all day, yeah. dude. There's a little bit more if you want the rest of this. I didn't. Here, drink the rest of this first. I okay. didn't. I didn't know it was going to be so good. Yeah, twist my arm a little yeah. bit. <laughs> so um, if you guys were here during uh, the last segment, uh, part two, we are going to do kind of a little switcheroo ski because uh, Ivan is a, is a loving and caring father and he's taking care of some family duties right now. So we're going to kind of jump ahead to our originally scheduled part four. And so we're going to talk about the newest Supreme Court judge. Um, I think they're calling her... KBJ now. She's like the That's new acronym, down, yeah. right? That's what I wrote down. Yeah. Here. Oh man. They are. She's she's and she's been on I she's not even ruled over any cases yet. And she's already has an acronym. Oh, she's yeah. KBJ. Yes. Um so Oh my god. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about this for a little bit. So I have a little bit of a preface and then we'll kind of get into the conversation. So like I said, I watched all but three hours of the questioning. And so, sorry about that. And I, we, I stopped watching and I told Colin because we got, I got to the end and she's been ask answering questions for like 18 hours or something like that. And now the Democrats are at the point where they're asking her questions that are just, could you expand on this particular idea? And so she has no idea what they're going to ask her. So there's no prepared answer for it. She's talking really slow and it's no, it's no hit on her because she, she doesn't know what they're going to say. And she's been at it for 18 hours. So this is, but the hearings itself are unlistable at that point. She's talking very slow. She's repeating herself a lot because she's trying to think while she's talking at the same time. And it's been so long. And at that point, it's just unlistable. She, her answers are like, you know, uh, in my time as a judge, I've learned that in your job as a judge, you have to do things that are very difficult because being, uh, you know, a judge is very difficult. And like, it, and it's, it is unlistenable. But not quite as bad as Kamala Harris's. Uh, it's time to do what we've been doing. No, the time is no, <laughs> it's not, not quite that bad. No, not quite as okay, bad as that. Right. But it's yeah. it gets pretty close. And so I just had to stop. But I got the vast majority of it. So. My only real preface to it, right, is that so obviously she's the first black woman to serve on the Supreme Court. And that was one of Joe Biden's promises is that, you know, if I have a Supreme Court nomination in my time, it's going to be a black woman. I don't have a I don't have any problem with this. Right. My my issue with this whole narrative is that let me start with this. I have no doubt and I don't really have any reason because I've heard opinions either way. I don't have really any reason to believe that she's not qualified to be, a, to be a Supreme Court justice. I don't have any reason to believe that. Other than that some people's opinions, other people have ruled the other way. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know anywhere near enough about the law to judge whether or not she's truly qualified. Right? I think that by, because there's no set criteria even to be a Supreme Court justice other than mm -hmm. the few qualifying factors, but I do believe that by making the scope of your search so 
narrow in the beginning, you nearly virtually guarantee you are not going to find the best candidate because you are looking in such a small group. And that doesn't mean that she's not a good candidate and that she's not qualified, but mm -hmm. because you are not looking at everybody, you are virtually guaranteeing that you do not have the best possible candidate. Mm -hmm. But I also would acknowledge that there's no way to really say who the best candidate could be because there isn't a set criteria. So she could be, and I, like I said, I can't say for certain that she's not, but you almost guarantee that she's not the very best person at all because you only looked at a certain category of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, you're – how would you put that? I mean, the way in which you discriminated to get to your ultimate categorical list, by default, you have to consider the fact that you overlooked somebody right. because you Who didn't be look better. at everybody. Right. You know, and that people discriminate all the time. We've talked about proper uses of discrimination and how that works and the what the word really means and how it is. And in this case, Joe Biden discriminated against every single possible Supreme Court judge nomination that wasn't a black woman. Right. And I mean, I don't know how, like you said, I don't know how many people there might have been, but obviously it begs the question, who didn't you look at? I mean, it just... For intersectional reasons, why did you not look at right. everybody? It seems like if you're going to go with their line of logic, that I, it's been shoved down our throats since day one, there's not enough diversity on the bench like that. Right. So you have to in there in you have to look at things intersectionally at that point, and so then you make a decision from America. there. And, yeah, and obviously, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know who might have worked if you didn't interview or look at at least everybody that was qualified. You just said the only the only people, you know, unless you're a black woman, you need not apply. But, right. But also, I do recognize the reality of our political situation is it, uh, that was something that he decided to hitch his, his campaign wagon to, and he doesn't need to think about it. There are enough, uh, you know, Democratic donor... Uh, uh, PACs and, and super PACs or, or 501c3s that donate to, you know, that are so involved with the Democratic Party and their nominations and all this, they have a list ready to go to fit XYZ type of categor categorical discrimination. Right. And they say, okay, pick her. And the Republicans do the same thing. They get a list from like uh, uh, like the Federal Society or something like that. And they go, okay, well, those are our top choices. That's how you get a Ra Rachel Levine as the deputy uh, general or yes. whatever, as the, as the health department. <laughs> That's, Bro. Like she is perfect. Yes. <laughs> she <laughs> is the one for this job. Man, that patriarchy is so crafty. And she's a doctor. Right. That's great. <laughs> Look, That's That's perfect. Let's find the highest job possible. Oh. Let's get her in there. Yeah. So, did Zeke, do you have anything to say on this <laughs> this initial point? No, bro. Bro, I You're have. like, I'm not going there. <laughs> yes. No, it's just like, uh, you know, I try to put my politics aside on it. I don't know what her track record is on it. Yeah. So she doesn't have a track record. So, it would be disingenuous of me to be like, to just make these assumptions. It would be like a Brett Kavanaugh type deal by making assumptions based off of what republicans are saying about her right or what democrats like for and me can... I'm just i'm gonna give her a chance i'm i and then we'll see what her track record is on what she you know goes for or against right and just actually speak louder than words i don't care about any fucking yeah all the all that is is just a dog and pony show really when you go through that fucking senate hearing or that congressional oh, yeah. hearing it's just a big dog and pony show, waste of fucking taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. It's ultimately just. It's going to be on along team lines. So. Yeah. Well, let me ask that's you that. The watch order. Yeah, right. In, in that kind of vein of thought, um, you know, your overall thoughts on, on the idea that, you know, who's, whose spot was she replacing? Um, Judge Kennedy. No, no not no, Kennedy, no. but uh, it, it was a, a strongly considered kind of like reserved Breyer. progress Breyer, Justice Breyer. Um, okay, yeah. Like it was a liberal vote in, yeah. in the colloquial use of like how people look at the Supreme Court. So it was a it was an it was a hard left vote. And so you filled the shoes with somebody that's another hard left vote. It's 
obviously it's it's toxic to the extreme when we actually care if we care about a republic to think that way but recognizing the reality on the ground of what it is it's almost like nobody really cares because it's like well nothing's changed at this point you've you've kept you know the 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 two sides waging a constant war to get the one extra vote or the two extra votes whenever you can i mean basically the battle lines stayed where they're at no front has changed everybody's the same thing and so it's almost like who really cares that's almost why i think we got kind of like a lackluster uh republican uh, defense you know if you will or an attack on her it was pretty right. mild i mean there were some things i'm sure we'll get into about like her rulings on on like uh pedophilia cases or something like that or yeah. sexual stuff yeah, like I mean, that there which... was there was something about if she could define what a what a woman, woman was yeah and i mean and that's that, just a that dumb bothered question. me but that was just like whatever uh, right so who because whoever asked that just to put a bow on it whoever asked it knows what they were asking and knew mm -hmm. that she couldn't say anything and it's yeah. If you watch more than one of these circus shows, like you know what you're in for, and a question like that just kind of pisses you off because you know you got to sit here for 15 more minutes until they get to the next person to ask their questions. Like you're just wasting my fucking time now that I got to sit here plugged into C-SPAN and watch this this shit show unfold, and then all the stupid headlines are going to come out the next day and all this when when it comes to actual substance and and questions that have import and matter. It's not one of those. It's just a waste of time. You know? so everyone did their traditional thing. Sheldon Whitehouse talked about dark money on both days. So for 30 minutes, he talked to her about dark money, which doesn't really have anything to do with her unless they're going to see a case that's going to overturn Citizens United or something. Yeah. Then she doesn't have anything to do with that. They're asking her a bunch of questions or framing questions in the way that it would be her personal opinion in which she can't answer. And they're saying, well, why the fuck won't you answer this question? Yeah. You know, there was a lot of stuff like that. So... The, the same thing you were getting pissed off when people were talking to Gorsuch about. There you were know? many people who used it to make points about, about Kavanaugh, and there were many people who used it to talk about the shadow docket and talked about different aspects of the court that they don't like, mm -hmm. and they used her, even though she's not even on the court yet, as a window to talk about this issue for 50 minutes collectively over a few days, which, again, becomes fucking torturous to listen to, you know? Welcome to the south of the streets, coming at you every week. With this food for thought, hope you're ready to eat.